Hello everybody, welcome back. Here I am, back at home. Production value has increased 10x. Let's have a look at some of these charts then, shall we? So the mo main focus, I suppose, today is going to be around Ethereum and the alt season that I predicted, I suppose. I Again, trying to stay away from that word, alt season, I know it upsets bulls and bears, but it was all, really, all I was talking about was, I think Ethereum's about to move up, which is why I bought Ethereum just under a week ago, last Tuesday before the FOMC, um, and basically the rejection on the two, uh, on the uh, trend line here, which is 58.5% Bitcoin dominance. So we're still sort of moving down here, so we've still got a fair bit of room to run, even based on the daily. A bit of a bounce could take place here on the um, 200 exponential, it could mean another 3.68%, uh, and then obviously on the weekly, you've got even lower than that to, to go to get really excited. You could potentially even see continuation down towards another 9% from where we are right now. The uh, 4 hourly uh, has more or less met the um, the, the temporary resistance, the temporary excuse me, the temporary support here where a bit of a bounce could take place. And if it's going to get a bounce on the dominance chart, it's probably going to come in the form of a pullback across markets, Bitcoin that would be. So we're looking at the Ethereum to Bitcoin pair. We've just retested the 200 exponential on the four hourly, which is a death cross retest. We do have a pump signal here now though, just to make things even more confusing. So, you know, the pump signal was generated on the last four hourly closure. Uh, you know, this doesn't have to play out immediately. A pullback from here and then a pump later on, taking us up to perhaps maybe 0.0428 Satoshis. That could be the way it plays. Uh, based on the daily, still looking good as far as momentum. In fact, I'd probably say that we are getting close to a, a, a much bigger breakout um, and a rotation event, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, they can't take away from the fact that this is a major resistance here anyway, uh, based around supports and resistances and moving averages. So it looks to me like we do have the power to edge up a little bit further, but the four hourly can reject from here. And the pump signal could take you up to that level, which I'll just measure it because it's, it's quite small now. Another three and a half percent move. <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything, but so far it's outperformed Bitcoin eight and a half percent really over this last week. So entering in last week, you know, before FOMC, before the rate cut, has been pretty good. So, yeah, not bad. I'm quite, quite pleased with that. It's not the alt season everybody's thinking about, you know, but I, I honestly think if it, if it is, it's only just getting started. I was referring to it as a, uh, like a car being in first gear. So you can't speed down the motorway on first gear, can you? Hey, eh? You're not going to be able to do that. Eh? You've got to go to second gear, third, fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth. So let's have a look at Ethereum, its actual self. Four hourly, yet to confirm a golden cross. Probably this time tomorrow we'll have had it, which means that you could see a nice pullback into it. Exponentials give you 2,500. Simples give you 2,475. And if it fails from all these areas, then yeah, I suppose at that point it's, it's a write-off. And uh, we'll be coming back down to the, probably where we started from, maybe even lower. I'm not so sure that that is the case, though, to be honest with you. Let's have a look at Bitcoin then, shall we? And uh, we'll more or less leave it there. There's no point in um, in uh, getting uh, too deep into uh, into all these charts on a Monday morning. So another attempt here today, this morning, to break that 200 simple moving average, which is the last resistance on the um, on the on the daily, which is a big deal. So that is your uh, death cross, the last portion of the death cross, really. And if we break it, and we'll sail up, most likely to around 68,000. Uh, no slowing of momentum on this daily here. No pump signal either. But to be fair, you can you can stay at this level, or you can even come down uh, by the end of the week, and you'd get a pump signal at 60,000 on the itchy cloud, um, which would be very nice and tasty, to be honest. So let's just check that four hourly then to see how the shorter term time frames look. So similar to most altcoins really, um, we do have the golden cross on the 4 hourly, uh, pull back into that will give you a, a target of just below 60,000, between 50,500 and 60,000, sorry 59,500 and 60,000. So a pull back into those areas should be a buy the dip really, a bounce from there, so that would be a, an excellent target to uh, to go for. Uh, so. Keep, keep your eye on the prize if you come down to that level. Um, also highlighted by the 200 exponential on the uh, on the daily here and the 20 moving average on the daily. So a lot of support. I mean, support's all the way down on the daily, really. 62,000, we'll call it, or just below. 
60,600 and then 59,500. So a lot of support below us on, on Bitcoin's daily. We are getting picked up already on the 7 simple, which is usually actually quite bullish, to be honest with you, for, for a, another run up. So it's a, it's a difficult one to call, I would say. Um, but as of this very moment in time, yeah, we're pushing the last ma major area of resistance and could easily go straight up um, into you know 68,000. So... Yeah, I mean, it's it's a difficult one for anyone who's not in a position right now because positions should have been taken, you know, last week. And if anything, you know, from a trader's, you know, through a trader's lens, you'd be looking to, if anything, limit positions at these areas because these are sort of major resistances. However, you know, I'd, I'd probably say that judge, judged on what we see right now does look quite quite optimistic for a continuation S&P 500 so the futures market here pre-market and um, we're getting a support on a on a 21 and a 20 moving average on the four hourly so this one still looks like it wants to trend up in the short term anyway so we might be looking at a bit of a green day on stocks maybe even a new all-time high on the S&P um, a little bit of slower momentum, one driver bearish divergence over here on the money flow index. If we do make a new all-time high on the four hour, you probably get a third drive of that. So bearish divergence, three drives usually gives enough to warrant a pullback there uh, on the four hourly. And again, there's plenty of places to be supported from. Um, one drive bearish divergence on the RSI on the daily. I won't get too upset about that. So it looks like a new all-time high is about to kick in on S&P today. And then whether we pull back from there is a, it's a different story. Still got the continuous uh, bearish divergence on the um, on the RSI on the on the weekly here as well. So I think this is what I think just based on what we see right now. I think we're going to make an attempt to move up across the board Bitcoin, Ethereum and S&P today and then wherever we go to will at that point cause a bit more of a red. So probably from tomorrow throughout the rest not the rest of the week but for maybe a couple of days at least we we move to a new high and then we consolidate a little bit only on the short term, you know, maybe the four hourlies uh, get retested down at these lower zones, you know, towards you know, 60,000. It'll be higher than that, obviously, because these will be creeping up. So I think we're going to move up a little bit. And then from there, we consolidate perhaps maybe for the rest of the week and get picked up again. Same thing with S&P, same thing with Ethereum. Altcoins, again, they're all different, aren't they? They're all different. This is why we do the uh, the Patreon live streams to look at each one of them individually. But they're just going to follow the market at the moment. Um, they are brewing. I mean, this is Atom, which is one of the weaker ones, but still, even though it's weak, it has outperformed the majority. And it's thirty percent from the bottom to the top there. So you know, they're gonna. They, this is how they're gonna run. Yeah, you know, they're gonna move with the market. So long as Ethereum continues to outperform Bitcoin, exactly as expected, we should continue to move down on the dominance chart, exactly as expected. Which should, uh, at a top target, you know, or should I say bottom target, take you down to around 52.5% dominance. Which would be your alt season, I suppose. We'll just say it, alt season. You know, someone's got to click on the video, otherwise you'll never get a dose of reality. So, that is the deal. We're looking for a little bit further up today, probably consolidation over the next few days after today. Uh, and then get picked up, perhaps towards the end of the week, into next week. And probably just go from strength to strength, in the form of altcoins over Bitcoin. That's right. Uh, Michael Saylor might not be particularly pleased, because there's only one crypto asset. But I believe that there's many crypto assets at the moment, and they're looking like they should all... Well, it's a sweeping statement. The vast majority of them should outperform Bitcoin, at least in the very short term. But be careful. Let's not go crazy. You know, this is just you know, a short-term setup, basically, across the board for altcoins on four hourlies. They're not... They're not confirming major uptrends on dailies, but I suppose uptrends always start from lows, which look terrible. Um, Atom probably being a good example of that. You know, this is a chart which does look terrible, but that does not mean that it can't turn around and go to brand new all-time highs at some point over the next 12 months. But, you know, looking at it right now, you'd be like, there's no real reason outside of all the other things that we've talked about, which was, you know, I suppose dominance chart, Ethereum chart, and just the general market as a whole to say that a bottom could be close if not already in. So, you know, Atom is Atom. I'm not highlighting this as anything special. It's just for some reason it's one of the last charts that I've looked at. The most important thing would be to look at this bad boy over here and, and recognize how it is going 
from uh, a significant low, you know, boosh, doosh, and then now we're above all moving averages, pump signals on the daily, and waiting for a breakout really to, to continue. So, love it. I, I'm enjoying it. It does look good. Um, have a nice day. Take it easy.